Um, but yeah, the Templars are now on the field. Storm is ready. He's putting out Archons. And Thorzane is responding very appropriately by putting out Ghosts. That'll be ready to EMP those Archons as soon as they get into range. Uh, Thorzane is starting to look a little skimpy in his main with a little too many workers there. I'd like to see him take a fourth. Same goes for Naniwa here in the next little bit. Uh, go ahead and take their force as soon as the action calms down just a little bit. A Zealot and a Pro Brawl leading up here to see what the forces are on the field for Thorzane to see if he likes the engagement. It looks like he does not he's just going to sit back just a little bit. And you can see him smartly spreading his units to prevent the EMP from doing a lot of damage if those EMPs in fact go off. The two extra warp gates are, or rather gateways are done. They should be transformed into warp gates any second. Here comes the two doing that now. Naniwa is posturing to take his fourth as he's putting up a pylon here for either reinforcements or to put some buildings here to tank a little bit of damage if Thorzane decides to take that avenue. But that's pretty far out of his way. Yes, the Marine is actually going to scout that this building is over here and he's going to be like, huh, that's kind of odd that he would have something over here and no expansion, so he should be expecting that expansion very soon. Actually, I lied. It looks like Storm never got started, so Storm is not done. And the, there's only, I believe, one Templar on the field right now. No, there's three Templar. I'm sorry, they get kind of mixed in here a little bit. Uh, so both of them just kind of sitting around, macroing up to their heart's content. Three more ghosts are on the way. It's going to be a lot of ghosts out of Thorzane. Five more barracks on the way. Uh, he's not pulling a ton of resources, but I'm expecting his economy to start really building up. Planetary Fortress is over here, but the Zealots are going to get a couple of kills before they die. They do kill a couple of SCVs. And I still can't believe that huge worker kill discrepancy. 34 to 4. Uh, in favor of Naniwa, but Naniwa really just gave Thorzane too much of an opportunity to come back. I think he got too scared after losing that fight right here to Thorzane, probably fearing just a counterattack and that would just flat out kill him. So he just sat back, he decided not to make probes for a while and make units instead, and then he finally got to a point where he was comfortable to start making probes, but he has stopped probe production once again. Uh, it is at 65 harvesters, which is a little low for uh, your, you know, your max that you'd want to get. He's ready to push off of these three bases, though, so you can see a small engagement. A uh, nice snipe out of that ghost. Templar is leading up, and the Templar gets sniped by these ghosts. So really nice work with those thus far, using minimal energy to kill these Templar. Put them out of the exchanges for good. EMP goes down on this Archon, and this is going to basically assure that that position is his. So he's going to have vision. Up comes a nice storm, huge feedback, killing one of the ghosts. So a uh, nice little caster versus caster battles here so far. Another warp in might prompt Ryan Naniwa to go. He needs to be careful. All these Templars are, are clumping up a little bit too much. Scan goes down. He's going to see these Templars are clumped. Here comes the engagement. There's the huge EMP all over Naniwa's army. So you can see them all with no shields. Uh, huge engagement here. All the Zealots are stuck in the back, unable to get into the fight. Uh, Naniwa's army is just clumping up a little bit too much, but he may still be able to outlast this. This is going to be really, really close between these two. Uh, the medevacs are kind of blocking all the action here. Another big EMP goes down. And the forces just seem like they're dwindling equally. This is such smart play with these Archons intercepting reinforcements. But it looks like the Medivacs just have too much energy on them. Uh, they all go down. Thorzane still has an army standing. And Naniwa does not. He needs to retreat right now. He's getting as many Archons up as he possibly can. Knowing that there are no ghosts left in this mixture. He should be able to actually push this off okay. There is one ghost now rallying. It does not have enough energy for EMP. There's more reinforcements here sort of streaming out from Thorzane and... Here come the SCVs. I think they're just transferring. I don't think he's going to pull these for an attack. No, he's just transferring them to the gold. So, Thorzane's gold is now established. You could see the command center was coming in during the middle of that fight, landing there and just saying, no, you're not going to kill me. And this is really, really smart. Uh, repairing all of your medevacs with your SCVs. These medevacs are really this, this army's lifeblood, uh, aside from the ghosts. So, you cannot afford to just go in there with a bunch of hurt medevacs. So I love this repair out of Thorzane. And then he just to go ahead and rally them straight to the gold minerals and get mining. Plus three is now on the way for the Terran infantry, or the bio, whatever you want to call it. Robo is now coming down here for Naniwa. Naniwa's still just kind of falling behind in the macro game after losing that battle now. If we take a look at the income, it's still 69, 64 in favor of Thorzane. This is about ideal where you want to be as Terran if you're running this unit composition, maybe even up to 75. But you have uh, the orbital commands back in your base for muling. And if you get to this point, you probably want to throw down an auxiliary command center so that you can get more mules. Uh, Naniwa still does have a proxy pylon sitting down here, so he can warp in some harassment reinforcements. Here's a Templar pressing up here. The Marine's going to see it. The Templar has to retreat so he doesn't get lost. Thorzane with a misclick, having to unload his units really fast. The Templar can come up here and land a nice storm or some feedbacks if, if Thorzane's not careful. The problem with this thus far is that 
Naniwa doesn't have any observers, so he can't see where this army is. So if he's going to try to get into caster versus caster fights, he's not going to have the advantage of seeing where uh, Thorazine's army is before he fights. So uh, he needed to have that robotics facility up quite a while ago so he could get spotting on there. There's now robotics bay coming down, which I really like that transition, if he can actually get the Colossus out. But Thorazine has a huge lead right now. Uh, Thorazine is going for this base. There's a bunch of probes here on a missed rally, not actually mining. So he's going to lose this Nexus, but it's not like that Nexus was mining a whole lot anyway. The ghosts are pressing up here in advance. The ghosts now cloak, which is really smart. If he can see this, he needs to storm right here. Both of the Templar get sniped, and uh, he's taking a whole bunch of damage. War snipes going off from these cloak ghosts. Uh, Naniwa has no observation right now, and we can see Thorazane pressing into the third. He's going to take out this Nexus, no doubt. All these cloak ghosts are so menacing, doing so much work to try and snipe all the Templars coming up and all the Zealous that they possibly can. Here comes a, a flank from the back, but Naniwa quits after Thorazine just has too much stuff. So uh, Naniwa was mined out as well. I cannot believe Thorazine actually pulled that back um, after that first attack. He was getting really, really crushed. He lost so many workers. Once again, the final worker kill count was 39 to 13, but all these workers were killed at the end. So for the most part, it was about 35 to maybe 3 the entire game. Thorazine brought it back, actually won that game because of Neniwa's uh, lack of tech and lack of uh, late game macro as well. So, great comeback there from Thorazane, forcing a game three. Whoever wins this next game, which I will broadcast shortly after this, is going to fight Rhett in the finals for the championship of this tournament. And there's a Marauder Grenade flying in midair. You rarely see that. But uh, whoever wins this finals is going to take home either ten or $11,000, somewhere in there. And it's a very large prize payout, especially for, for just a two-day competition. So I'll see you guys in the third game, which should be coming right up. Stay